Featured on my long list of history faves are people like Mary Queen of Scots, Nikola Tesla, Charles I and Louis XIV of France. Men and women who changed the world and outshone everyone around them. So how does a relatively little known figure like James IV make a list like that? Never mind make it, in fact he makes it almost all the way to the top. James's reign began in 1473, after the death of his father, James III, at the hands of a rebellion that used the young James as a figurehead. Now when James learned about his indirect role in his father's death, he began to wear a metal belt around his waist next to his skin every length for penance, adding another weight every single year. He was an intelligent man with a fondness for music, science and the arts. He's also the last King of Scotland who we know for a fact spoke Gaelic, which was already starting to be vilified and demonised at the time. James has a reputation as the first true Renaissance king in Scotland, and he had clear ambitions for greatness. He undertook huge building projects at the royal residences in Edinburgh, Falkland, Linlithgow and here at Stirling Castle. James appears to be a, a quiet, considerate sort of man with a good hold on the country's purse strings. He granted a royal charter to incorporate what would later become the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh, and he had huge naval ambitions, creating the entire village of New Haven to facilitate the building of the Great Michael, a ship that when it was launched in 1511 was the biggest ship in the world and completely outstripped the Mary Rose, which was launched in the same year. He also subscribed quite heavily to the ideas of chivalry, and you can see that quite clearly in the Queen's Inner Hall here at Stirling Castle, where you have reconstructions of the famous unicorn tapestries. It's important to remember that the age of chivalry has always been an idea that was in the past. It was created essentially to romanticise the Knights of the Crusades, but it still held huge influence in the 16th century, and James did his best to try and be the embodiment of this idea. When he moved to support France against Henry VIII, James actually sent a message to Catherine of Aragon, Henry's queen and regent, warning her that he was going to invade England within the month. When James did face battle, he was brave and headstrong and refused to sit at the back of his armies, maintaining that he couldn't expect his men to face death for him if he wasn't willing to do the same for them. The Battle of Flodden was a disaster from start to finish and James was actually excommunicated by Rome for breaking an earlier peace treaty with England. When the two armies met on Flodden Field on the 9th of September 1513, James was fatally wounded by an arrow and died alongside the vast majority of the Scottish nobility. James's legacy wasn't as he might have hoped his patronage of the arts and the sciences, but instead it became the Flodden Wall, a wall that enclosed Edinburgh, cutting it down to around about half a mile squared. He remains one of Scotland's most influential monarchs, and yet he features as simply a footnote in most history books.